efficient swimming pools versus inefficient swimming pools, or what makes a pool efficient versus one that is less efficient or its less efficient counterpart. Starting at the top of the list, for sure, is going to be a pool cover. Pool covers so dramatically increase the thermal efficiency of your pool. It's something like 90% reduction in evaporation. And I think that... Uh, we're currently teaching in the, the course curriculum for pool professionals that 95% of thermal losses or efficiency losses in a swimming pool happen through the surface of the pool through evaporation, leaving only 5% to happen through the walls and floor through convection and conduction and radiation. And as a result, if you don't have a cover on the pool, it is the literal equivalent of having a house with no roof at all like there's no there's no attic there's no insulation there's no roof there's nothing up there and the heat is just pouring out into the the universe and that's exactly what you have with a swimming pool with no cover on it especially at night if you've ever gone out if you have even a moderately warm swimming pool on a cool evening or a cool night you can see the steam just pouring off your swimming pool and that's definitely money that you're you're losing uh so having a cover on a pool is the number one thing that an efficient pool is going to have versus an inefficient swimming pool if your pool is not covered in one degree or another then it can't possibly be called an efficient swimming pool. So next, uh, an efficient swimming pool will have a variable speed swimming pool pump, for sure. You can't convince me otherwise. The main filtration pump needs to be a variable speed pump, and there is no other solution. It, an inefficient swimming pool would have a single speed pump, and even if you have that single speed pump and you turn it off, part of the day as in it only runs a certain number of hours a day that still fails to be as efficient as a variable speed pump and so that's why an efficient pool would have for sure a variable speed pump uh what else an efficient swimming pool will have larger swimming pool pipes. Uh, commonly, an inefficient pool design will have 1.5 inch or inch and a half PVC pipes. And these leave a lot to be desired in terms of efficiency. Yes, they will move enough water to potentially keep your pool filtered and clean. But again, we leave a lot on the table in terms of efficiency because the larger the pipe, the slower the water will move. And slow moving water moves more efficiently than fast moving water. Fast moving water deals with a lot of losses due to friction and turbulence. And that's why you definitely want to oversize the plumbing. And one 1 1.5 inch or one inch and a half plumbing is really too small for modern day swimming pools. And you see it even still to this day. And the reality is that two inch plumbing is still pretty small, leaving a lot of room on the table for going even larger with the plumbing. Uh, so uh, definitely a modern swimming pool is going to have much larger plumbing lines, two and a half inch, three inch, four inch, maybe even more for larger or commercial swimming pools, uh, but certainly much larger than inch and a half plumbing, which is what I would expect to see on an inefficient swimming pool installation. Uh, so another thing that you would see on an efficient pool installation is you would expect to see the equipment set, pump, filter, and heater located relatively close to the pool. You don't want it 50 feet away, 100 feet away. These are inefficiencies and losses that we're introducing to the system that we can avoid simply by planning it differently and having that equipment set located closer to the pool. And further to that, it would be ideal to have the equipment at or below the water level in the pool. It would be much less efficient to have the pool equipment raised above the water level in the pool. I mean, it can work. It will function like that. But again, you're introducing losses, introducing in inefficiencies that we can eliminate with the change to the design. So these are some of the, the differences that you'll find between an efficient modern day swimming pool and a less efficient uh, counterpart part design. I hope you found this information helpful. And if you did, please like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can check out my website, swimmingpoolsteve.com.